It is the Morning X with Chloe Wednesday. How are you? I hope we're going well. We are about to speak to someone who is so inspirational. His name is Tristan Miller. Let me take you back about a year ago. Tristan was working for Google. Before that, he was working in radio and sales in Melbourne, Australia. Google shut down their Melbourne office and Tristan was out of a job. Okay, what do you do when you're out of a job? You change your life. Well, at least that's what Tristan Miller decided to do. He thought, you know what, I'm going to do something that makes a difference in the world. I'm going to run 52 marathons in 52 weeks, despite the fact that I don't really have any running experience. What? Yes, that is correct. So he embarked on a journey. He sold his house. He saved up some money. On the 1st of January, he found himself in somewhere very cold at midnight, not celebrating New Year's like everyone does traditionally. He was in Zurich and he embarked on his first of 52 marathons. Since then, we see he's been to Israel, India... Dubai, Canary Islands, Marrakesh, Germany, Luxor, Egypt, Verona, Italy, Tokyo, Japan, Napa Valley, US, Cyprus, Italy, Slovakia, South Africa, Paris, Boston, London, Belfast, Prague, the Great Wall of China, Kigali in Rwanda, Hungary, Easter Island in Chile, Rosario in Argentina, St. Petersburg, Christianopolis in Sweden, Switzerland again in Zermatt, Busana, Italy, and most recently, Lake Hovsgol in Mongolia. His name is Tristan Miller and welcome to Tristan, one of my good, good friends from back home in Australia. How are you? Hey, dude. How are you? I'm very well and you're in the middle of the Trans-Siberian Express. How are you? Yeah, I'm literally sitting on a train cruising through Siberia as we speak. <laughs> So this might cut out. I literally didn't get any sleep. I ended up straight on the uh, on the train. So no sleep, and I believe it's because you were writing one of the blogs on your website, so you can keep everyone up to date with what you're doing. Just had to get that blog done. I haven't done one already for another two weeks, and it literally takes that much effort and time to do. So while I'm moving around, I just have to skip sleep and get it done. Your blog's about your time in Spain, and for anyone that hasn't done the running of the bulls, it's incredible. God. Yeah, it was kind of a cool read. So good. It was really good. I want to do the running of the bulls now. That's right. That's my first feedback. Okay, I appreciate it. Now, enough of us talking all this stuff about your blogs and stuff. You're on a quest to do 52 marathons in 52 weeks all around the world, and you're 30 in already. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> well, I'm at the moment, Chloe, putting my, my body through a whole lot of hell. Okay. But, uh, but I, I've been trying to rest up after my last effort, which was a 100k race in Mongolia. Yeah. And uh, and trying to rest up ended up being a little bit more difficult than I expected because sitting on a train for something like 50 hours in the last week hasn't really helped. This 100-kilometre marathon that you did, it's not any old 100-kilometre marathon. You came second. I did. I came second. How I was, I think I was more that? shocked than the people that I was uh, racing against. And it was, it was a kind of alpine marathon, I guess you could say. It was at quite high altitude and you ran up into the mountains uh, by the lake. Lake Hobsgold, which is kind of a huge inland uh, lake, you know, kind of almost a sea in Mongolia, and, and, a ma- and a massive national park and major attraction for the area. So it was a beautiful place to run. Uh, running in the hills there was, was really difficult because it's quite hard on the lungs to breathe at that altitude. And but the yeah, fact that you've a, got to run 100 kilometres. <laughs> so, yeah, well, just to keep going for that long, I'm not sure if your lungs can get used to it. I actually couldn't breathe properly the next day. I uh, had to take shallow breaths for about, about 24 hours afterwards. Oh, wow. So you're not even you're not even giving yourself any sort of chance for recovery when you're doing something like that, really, are you? You know, I might have to take about a month off, you know, like from running all together after knocking out a marathon because it's quite uh, taxing on the body, especially... <laughs> Especially if you're trying to race. That was a little bit of damage. I'm not really giving myself that much opportunity to get it right. But, you know, this is all about trying to prove the impossible possible this year. Now, where are you off to next? Where's the next race? Well, the next race is in Siberia, and that's where I am right now. It's, a, it's in a city called Omsk. Um, and I guess it's kind of halfway across Siberia, or I guess a little bit closer to Moscow. I've, I've come from Mongolia on the Trans-Siberian, and I've mm-hmm. been off at a place called Kutsk, and uh, I'm heading up to a place called Tomsk, and then I'm going to Omsk. Mm-hmm. All in all, um, the, the amount of time that I spend on the train ends up being about six days, I think, in the, in the end, or oh five my to God. six days. But my race is Saturday, you know. Well, we, we wish you all the best for that one. And then uh, you continue your journey. You're off to Chicago, New York, for the two big ones there, of course, in October and uh, November. What else is on the schedule in the next month or so? Well, I've got Berlin as well and Iceland. And uh, towards the end of the year, I have the opportunity to um, to go down to Antarctica 
to go and run a 100k race down there, yeah, and that's my second to last race. But just before I was there, I'm coming to their family island. Yay! You're coming here for a crazy weekend. You're doing back-to-back races that weekend as well. So you'll be doing the reggae run in Jamaica on the Saturday and then coming to our beautiful island here for the Cayman Islands Marathon, which DMS Broadcasting is a proud sponsor of for December the 5th. And you'll be here running alongside the beautiful ocean, a bit different to Siberia, I would imagine, for weather-wise. It's going to be hot. Where's the hottest place you've run so far? Egypt. Egypt was pretty taxing. Uh, you know, I was basically in the desert there in the Valley of Kings, and that was about 32 degrees, so I was pretty hot inside there. It will probably be on par with that. But the race starts really early. Now, the exciting thing is that you've got a connection to the Cayman Islands. Not only just I'm fortunate enough to call you one of my friends, but actually Chris and Associates have jumped on board to help you on your journey is that correct yeah that's right uh ken chris and the and the guys at uh, christmas associates have uh, sponsored us and they're, they're basically my, my first sponsor i've had a little bit of help here and there but these guys have really come to the fore and uh we're, we're supporting a group called facing africa a charity that they want to support and and reading into them that is a really really cool too so I'm feeling pretty blessed, actually, to get introduced to uh, the right people through yourself, Bowie, and through the good people in Cayman Islands. So oh, it's a I'm pretty happy about really, you know, making my dream come true through people like that. Well, I guess it is. It, t- it takes a village to do something like this. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty lucky. And I guess it means you've had to call on a lot of favours around the world to get you from here and there and beds to stay in. So friends of mine that are living in different places around the world. So I've been super lucky amount of support I've had. You've had international media recognition as well. I think sort of come the end of this, yeah. you'll have a job somewhere in the media. I mean, I know you've worked in the media before and in, in radio, but I guess you can only look at whatever next weekend's race is really at the moment in your life, hey? Yeah, I've only been able to take it one week at a time. To be honest, I didn't think I'd make it this far, you know. Oh, I'd be down on you. I can do it, but I thought there'd be a lot of a lot more hitches along the way, yeah. um, where my body would be down or I'd get more sick. But the times that I have got sick have been times where I've had a break, so I've just just seemed to have skipped through to the next race without being too damaged. Mm-hmm. So I'll really have to wait. Abonnent, time is not enough. Please call later. There we go. We're getting the... uh, the, We'll we'll call it an end there. We will uh, try and get in touch with Tristan again, but he is obviously dropping in and out because he's on the Trans-Siberian. You can follow his journey. It is an incredible one, and I'm just... I'm overwhelmed that I can call this guy a friend. Uh, you go to www.runlikecrazy.com. You can follow his antics. And he is a, uh, we're a big fan of him on our Facebook fan page. So you can follow his journey there as well. We will try and get in touch with him again before he does get down here for the Cayman Islands Marathon. But you can track him and support him on the side of the road. December 5th is the CI Marathon. Big thanks, of course, to Ken, Chris and Associates for supporting him as well. It is the Morning X. Back soon with much, much more.